Welcome everyone to Hey Kentucky. It is with great sadness that I need to do something that I never wanted to do, which is begin the show by announcing the former UK quarterback Jared Lorenzen has passed away. Now most of you know Jared is a former football great and a treasured member of Big Blue Nation. I too remember and cherish all of his success on the field. But I also knew Jared as a friend. He's been a part of the KSR and Hey Kentucky family for the last five years. And during that time, I've been fortunate to get to know him as a wonderful human being. His sports background in Kentucky is the tale of a dream life for virtually any bluegrass child. He won the football state championship at Fort Th Thomas Highlands in 1998, but he also made the Sweet 16 title game in basketball, showcasing his amazing athleticism that became his calling card in college. He chose to pass up other opportunities and played his college ball in the state of Kentucky. And what a dream career he had. He holds the records for most passing yards and touchdowns by any UK quarterback, and he set six NCAA records during his time donning the Big Blue. He left UK and was drafted by the New York Giants, playing three, season as, three seasons as Eli Manning's backup while winning a Super Bowl ring. He was inducted in the UK Hall of Fame in 2015, and he stands as maybe the most popular UK football player of all time. But I'm also here to tell you tonight about Jared the person. Jared Lorenzen was one of the kindest souls I have ever met, a friend to all who would meet him, and the epitome of the type of grace we so rarely see in public figures. I've never seen Jared refuse a picture or an autograph to a fan of any age. Even with fans who would sometimes be cruel and tease him about his weight or his time at UK, Jared never failed to respond back to them with kindness. He was great with young children especially, knowing the importance he had as a larger-than-life figure. And it's no secret that throughout his life, Jared's weight haunted him. What was once a trait that made him known later became a curse as weight problems affected his health. But he decided to make his attempt to lose weight an inspiration to others by taking fans along on his journey publicly. Jared wanted, to people, pe wanted people to see him, warts and all, to let them know that even heroes like him had struggles. And if he could deal with them, so could anybody else. Jared passed away today at the age of 38. He leaves behind two children in Taden and Taylor, a family who loved him and countless friends whose lives he touched. On a personal level, I just wanna say how much love and respect I have for Jared Lorenzen. He was not only one of my favorite athletes, he was one of my favorite people. In our last conversation, he looked at me and said, Matt, keep touching lives. It's what we are here for. Well, Jared touched my life and he touched so many lives in this state and in this nation. I will miss him dearly, and I know you will too. Tonight, we're gonna to celebrate and look back at his life with friends, former teammates, and the coach of UK. We will continue talking about the life of Jared Lorenzen right after this. Welcome back to A Kentucky. Now, the passing of Jared Lorenzen was announced earlier today by his family. They released this statement. It is with heavy hearts that the family of Jared Lorenzen would like to extend our sincere thanks and appreciation for all of your support and prayers over the past six days. We are deeply saddened to announce the passing of Jared today, July 3rd, 2019. Again, we appreciate all of the warm wishes and prayers, but as a family, we would request your respect and privacy. We will offer arrangement information in the coming days Please keep Jared's family and especially his children in your thoughts and prayers. I'm now joined by Mary Jo Perino and Drew Franklin, both people not only in the media, but friends of Jared over the years. Mary Jo, I'll start with you. You knew Jared as a person like we did. You covered him for many years, including when he played. What was the news like when you heard it today? I, I was sitting with you mm -hmm. and I just, I, I don't know. You, the last few days, you, I don't know if, you know, it, it came to mind, um, but you just don't, you just don't expect it. You just don't expect it, that 38, I just, I, you know, and the things that go through your head was the, the, um, the first thing that came to my mind was the Arkansas game, the seven touchdown, or the seven overtime game, where he looked at the crowd of folks that were leaving and said, you're gonna miss a hell of a game. <laughs> yes. I'd stay, I don't know where you're going because you're gonna miss a hell of a game. And that's the first thing that came to my mind is he was just, he, larger than life is, it, it, it was him. 
that that's the saying was made for him. It, it's about that game he used to say to me, I had to forgive you, Matt, that your name is Matt Jones from that yeah. seven <laughs> overtime game against Arkansas. You mentioned larger than life. I have to tell you, when I heard that Jared had gotten sick last week, part of me said, well, he'll be all right, Drew, because he's larger than life. He was such a beloved figure and such a huge part of us at, at, K, at KSR and Hey Kentucky. He almost seemed to be bigger than life. Yeah, and I associated this fight with him as a football player. You know, he'd be down in the backfield scrambling in a 25-yard gain. So when I'm imagining Jared up in that hospital room, I'm thinking, oh, he'll break out of this and turn it into a positive. Sally, this is a fight he couldn't win, and just like you all and everyone else watching, I'm absolutely devastated by the news. Yeah, and let me just say to those of you watching, this is really difficult for us. I mean, we, we, did, we were friends. Drew and I have worked with him for a long time. Mary Jo's known him forever. But we wanted, we thought it was important to actually talk about him as a person, but let's also talk about him as a player. He's a heck of a player at UK. Oh I, I said, I think he's the most beloved player in the history of UK football. He still holds the record for most passing yards. And we'll see some of the videos, the way he could scramble and it's throw. I mean, ridiculous. it really was unbelievable. And this, when he played, was back in the days where the media could watch all the practices. And he'd be on his knees throwing bombs from his from the ground, going through the goalpost from 50 yards. I mean, things that people can't do with a football, he could do. And he had fun. He There was a joy about him playing that everyone felt when you watched him. I think that infectious joy is part of why he was so popular. Yeah. I mean, part of it was there's this quarterback that weighs all this and he's, and he's nimble. But I think the infectious joy he played with, he seemed like the kind of guy that if he wasn't playing against Georgia on Saturday, would go out in the backyard and play with a bunch of guys in the neighborhood. That's what made him so fun. It's like he was a kid out in the backyard. He was doing things you're not supposed to do in a football game, but he was Jerry Lorenzen. To him, I'm just having fun with the guys. Some of his plays, if they hadn't worked out, they'd been the worst plays in football. The over-the-head throws, some of those runs. But he was just out there being Jared, and it was just such a blessing for all of us to watch him. Yeah, you mentioned everybody remembers the seven overtime guy, game. I always think about the throw behind yeah. his head. Unbelievable. Because he was playing against Georgia, he gets wrapped up and he takes the ball and throws it behind his head. And I think there was a little bit of that with Jared that is kind of how he was as a person. He always thought there was a way to make something happen. And if it required him to run around and scramble, I mean, this scramble against Louisville here, he almost gets tackled by about four people. His, his pad, shoulder pad comes out. He still keeps keeps running and then he dumps it off. That, right. that is Jerry Lorenzo. And that's that's also one of my favorite games because uh, the him and Dave Ragone were like this oh, little, yeah. little rivalry there. Little rivalry <laughs> there and we got him. You know, he got him that year, and that, that was awesome. It's interesting you say that about Dave Ragone, because through the course of the day, people have been reaching out to me to give their thoughts about Jared. And one of the people who did was Dave Ragone, who was his rival, Eli Manning, who was his rival in college and then was the starter for the Giants. All of these people really had these special memories. Yeah, and this is all bigger than sports, but it's been crazy to see Louisville fans. I mean, let's be honest, Jared was a little hard on Louisville fans. I he liked so. that rivalry as much as anyone. But all of them just uh, reaching out and saying what they thought of Jared. It's just been incredible to see the support. And th these stories people are telling, little fan interactions. I've been scrolling through Twitter, just putting a smile on my face through the bad news. Former players are all telling their stories. We're going to have one here in a minute who will probably do some of it. He loved Kentucky. I think that's an – when he was done – he still loved Kentucky. It was such a big part of his heart. He, he, um, when he, Kentucky beat Florida last year to end the streak, he did a periscope, which I tweeted out today, which was him crying about the fact they finally beat Florida. He still bled blue long after he stopped playing. Absolutely. I mean, and, and because he endeared himself to the Big Blue Nation so much, it was like a, a it's like a bond that will never, it will never be broken. He, was such a part of everyone because he's an everyman guy. Like he just, the, the joy he played with, the throws he made, you, you couldn't help but love him. And so when he felt that love back, it was such a mutual thing. Let's talk about him as a person. Okay, you and I did uh, pregame shows with him. We've done radio shows. And I've watched him over the years be so kind to people because he really is a cult hero. People see Jared Lorenzen and they scream. And, and the way he was interacted with fans I thought was so special. Yeah, we would walk around the stadium before games uh, out going by tailgates, and Jared couldn't walk 20 feet without someone to stop him, and he made time for everyone. I would love when dads would say, hey, we throw the ball to my kid, and Jared would throw it 40 yards over his head because he still has it. But he was just out there being nice to everyone and to us. Couldn't think of a better friend. We had so much fun. 
Right now, I'm wanting to cry my eyes out, and I can hear him in my mind daring me to cry, and I'm not going to let you win, Jared. But he was that guy. Every situation was fun and joy with him. I'm really shocked I got through that first one without crying. But I cried a lot earlier today because there's a there was a lot of sadness with Jared. I mean, let's be real. He dealt with the same thing that made him popular in many ways, his way, mm -hmm. and the fact that he was unique. Also was a struggle for him his entire life. He hit, at one point, and he was very public about this, he hit 500 pounds. And that struggle with weight, it made it to where the thing people knew about him and the thing people wanted to talk about him was also the thing that he was most insecure about. And that dichotomy was so hard for him and he fought through it and I, I had such respect because that had to be so difficult. Because he had to talk to people about it because they always brought it up to him. Yes. And then when he'd be by himself at night dealing with it, I, I mean, you saw it in a lot of his periscopes as he took fans on that journey with him through the Jared Lorenzen project. I just, I, I would be remiss if I hadn't said, didn't say that I have just been thinking about his kids so much today yeah. that's that to me is the hardest part because he was a great dad every time i was with jared i got an update on what his son was doing in football he was also throwing it over his head in line to be the next jared very proud father of both those kids two children that he absolutely adored that he loved that he would give anything for the fact that they won't have him is it's heartbreaking we're going to take a break when we come back we're going to talk to one of his former teammates and more it's a special tribute to jared lorenzen here on hey kentucky Welcome back to Hey Kentucky with our special tribute to Jared Lorenzen. We are very happy now to be joined on the phone by the UK football coach, Mark Stoops. Mark, thank you for taking the time. Absolutely, Matt. Uh, you know, I texted you earlier, but uh, very sorry for you. I know you guys were very close and, uh, you know, we're very saddened by this like everybody. That's a, a big loss to the Big Blue Nation. So it's uh, good to be on with you and sorry we're on under these circumstances. Yes, it is very sad. And you know, you as the sort of head of the UK football program, you got to see, even though you weren't here when Jared was here, what a big impact he has on our fans and on the program. Did you really, I mean, were you able to tell just how big Jared Lorenzen was for the Big Blue Nation? Yeah, w without a doubt. It was very evident, uh, you know, in my early years. You know, when Jared was around and he was involved and at the stadium and trying to get him fired up and just uh, the, the the appreciation that our fan base has for him, it was very evident. And, and that's not hard to understand. You know, a guy that just uh, was a fantastic human being and, and uh, a great player, but, uh, you know, he, he was just fun to watch as a football player and he was a great person and he was uh Great to have around and a great alumni. You know, I know you as a football player and as a coach, you're a rough and tumble football guy. I bet you the way Jared Lorenzen played is exactly the kind of player you would have wanted to coach. Exactly, and that's exactly why the Big Blue Nation loves him. So, you know, it's not hard to understand why people appreciated him and loved him and, uh, you know, just loved the way he played. And I absolutely, it would have been a pleasure uh, to coach him. Uh, obviously, the talent speaks for itself, uh, but the heart that he had and the passion that he had for the game, that's absolutely what we stand for. Well, I know, Mark, that Jared Lorenzen was a big fan of yours. He talked about how happy he was that you were at the helm of the program. We thank you for taking a minute to honor him tonight. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. I appreciate you, and uh, thanks for recognizing Jared tonight. Thank you. Thank yep. you. We are now also happy to be joined by Jeremy Cottle. He, Jeremy played came, uh, with Jared for four years. You told me you rode the airplanes with him. I know he was a friend of yours. What about the news today? It was heartbreaking. Um, you know, watching the, the post and not getting a lot of details the last few days, it's, it's been tough. You, you worried about him. Um, we all knew that his health wasn't uh, anywhere near top notch. Uh, and then to see somebody go into the hospital and hear rumors and whispers, um, you worried that something was coming. Uh, Jeremy, you you were kind of talking about um, some of the things, that, the, the antics of uh, you guys as as friends and teammates. Um, share that story about uh, about the plane rides. Yeah, I mean, there's some things you we we'll, we will always keep to ourselves or have in our little group. <laughs> uh, we're not going to put it out there for for everybody, but uh, you know, a couple of the fun things. Jared was was a larger than life character on and off the field. 
um, you know, his, his weight was a struggle, and you all have talked about that. Back then, we didn't see it as a struggle. He overcame it. He was able to go out on the field, never had any issues. Um, so we, we would sit on the plane together for away games, and um, it was always three by three, so there was an empty seat between us. And before every game, he would have me go down to the, to the gas station down on Euclid Avenue, buy a box of Oreos, put it in my bag so that I could take it on the plane, stick it be between us. I didn't, well, I may have had a couple of Oreos. <laughs> I bet you had a couple. Uh, maybe a few. But uh, that was one of his favorite, favorite things to have on the airplane. And so we had that. The coaches didn't have to know. And, uh, you know, at the time it was no big deal, but now it's, it's one of those memories. How was he as a teammate? I mean, I, it seemed like his, his teammates all loved him. Yeah, I mean, you, you hear leader. I, I don't know that that even comes close to what he was. Um, he was dedicated to the game. He spent a lot of time watching film. He was a really intelligent football player, um, and he expected a lot of ever, out of everybody else. Now, people would see him and say, oh, he can't keep his weight down, or he can't. The, the guy tried. The guy, the guy worked hard. Um, you know, he worked hard in his way, uh, and that's what made him a great football player. You know, I think one of the things that's special about him is sort of him as a Kentuckian, mm -hmm. right? I mean, this is a guy who's from Kentucky. Mr. Football. Mr. Football, played in the Sweet 16, went to Kentucky, came back to Kentucky. And I think, Mary Jo, part of the reason people feel such a connection to him is he is like one of us in a way. There are only a couple of people, you know, Tim Couch, Rex Chapman, Richie Farmer, that maybe we all watched Goose Givens when, we, when they were growing up and then watch them at this stage of life and, and to lose that is so hard. It, it, it is because it's, we're talking about a 20 year time frame here. So, you know, Drew, you were a kid, you know, watching Jared, you know, it's, it's your childhood memory followed by grown up memories. And so it's like part of your, your whole life. You mentioned we feel connected to him just being a Kentuckian, but also as soon as he left UK, he became one of UK's biggest fans and loudest mm -hmm. fans. He's in the crowd yelling at a bad call just as much as anyone else. He's active on Twitter talking about the games. He just always felt like one of us, whether he was out on the field playing or just in the stands cheering. Jeremy, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm curious. You play defensive end, so you have to take down quarterbacks. <laughs> in practice, could you ever get him down? No way. No, well, we didn't get an opportunity. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm glad. Because would I, you have gotten yeah, him down? Yeah, that's the thing. I think there's, there would have been several of us that would have been embarrassed. Now, I'm going to say I would not have been. I would have gotten him down. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, we, you know, we didn't get to touch him. Uh, but, you know, I, I would worry about some of the guys trying to. <laughs> His impact, though, went far beyond Kentucky. I mean, today... The amount of people that have reached out to me, because I'm the person who put out the news, has been unbelievable. There was a statement. The New York Giants mm -hmm. sent me a statement that they wanted to put out uh, for Kentucky. I think we'll have it here in a second. And, and in it, he, he, they said that Jared was a special person and a beloved Giant. He was an important member of our 2007 team, one that created its own destiny. Our thoughts are with Jared's family and friends who loved and appreciated him so much, just as our organization and fans did. And since then, I mean, I've heard from Eli Mann former teammates of his, these national sports writers. I don't know anyone, Drew, that met Jared Lorenzen that did not love him. Completely agree. And it's not just the writers and people that cover football. There are fans responding on Twitter just like, oh, man, the hefty lefty. I remember mm -hmm. watching him. He was great. You didn't have to know Kentucky or the New York Giants or any of his numbers. You just knew Jared Lorenzen was a fun guy to watch on the football field. What will his legacy be for those of you that played with him and after him? Um, you know, I, I think his enthusiasm, his love of the game, his love of, of the team and, and wanting to be part of it. Um, you know, there was no doubt that he was going to leave it all, all out on the field. And I think several times you saw him do that, where it be the, the throws behind his back or over his head, um, you know, carrying three or four guys, knocking them off, um, or just rooting on the defense, which, you know, a lot of the times the offense would stay on the sideline. He was right there. Uh, he'd come and try to get us ready to go. An amazing player, but also a better person. We're going to take a break and come back. Some final thoughts on the memory of Jared Lorenzen. Welcome back to Hey Kentucky. Some final thoughts on Jared, Jeremy. Um, you know, he, he was larger than life. Uh, I think the only thing that eclipsed his, eclipsed his football uh, skill was his love for life and, and uh, the happiness he brought other people. Drew? I grew up watching Jared. He's my favorite quarterback. Then I got lucky enough he became a friend. As fun as he was on the field, he was more fun just to be around. Can't imagine another football season without talking about it with him, just being a fan with him. Hey, Joe. An extraordinary athlete who wasn't afraid to be human and show us his flaws and all, and that's what made everyone love him. All of you watching out there, you know what Jared Lorenzen meant to you as a player. He was fun to watch. He was exciting. He loved the Big Blue Nation. But I'm here to tell you 
what a wonderful person he was. When he put on that uniform, he represented the pride of Kentucky. But most importantly to me, off the field, he represented what the best of Kentucky is about. Someone who cared about other people, who genuinely thought of others in time of need, and who wanted to help those who had problems, even when he had them themselves. I was very lucky to know Jared as a friend. And I have to tell you, I'm going to miss him more than I can even say. I wish everyone that knows him the best, and God bless you, Jared. We will never forget you. Thank you very much for watching Hey Kentucky.